go to the tools panel of Affinity Designer and create a shape and create another shape and change the color. So I've just got a couple of designs there. You can use anything. You don't have to, you could use type, you could use all kinds of different things, placed images, etc. I'm just gonna click there and just change the color. Now I've got two shapes here, you can see in the layers, and I can use the move tool to select them or just use the layers panel as well. So they're both selected. So now I can go over here, top left, there's an option here for group. I can also go to layer and group or command G or control G, or you can right click and you can see the option there for group. And I'm just gonna group them and they're grouped now. It's they're connected, but you can still move things around. So you can expand this group out and you can select the ellipse. Just select it like that and you can move it. You wanna say, oh, I want it there instead. I've made a mistake, put it in a different position. And also you can resize it. You can do all the things that you normally can. So you can just put it there. But it's still part of a group. And you see as a group, you've got this thing called pass through. So pass through, you can change that. So if I go and create another group, so I've got that group there, you can rename it. So you can call it something group one or whatever. So you can, and it will still say bracket group. So you know it's a group. It doesn't lose that aspect. But you can right click and you can duplicate. So you can get two groups and you can move it. Obviously you can position it there. You can say, you know what, like that. Or you can hold down the ultra option key and just duplicate that and you can position it across. And you can align them and all those sort of things, do a whole heap of things, distribute, etc. But you can see now I've got those groups all selected. You can select them via layers as well, of course. I can do exactly the same as before. I can right click and I can group. I can also right click there and group as well. There's a lot of ways of grouping things. So group. So you can have a group of a group and still it says pass through. However, let's just now go and select one of those groups and I can move that, say, on top of an existing, that other group. I can say, you know what, I don't want it to be passed through, I want it difference. So as soon as it's difference, and you can see I can move it over, and the blending mode is applied to that. However, if I expand that out and go to the ellipse, it still says normal. So you can actually change the blending mode for that within that, so go for difference for that, or one of the others. You can change it in numerous ways, and you can still move things around, resize, reposition, say you decide, you know what, I want a smaller design that, or I want a different color. Just change the color, maybe go for green and so on. So you can see, you can build up linear light, that group's got difference, this group has still got pass through. Well, you've got a group there, you can always right click and you can duplicate that and you can move that around. And again, you can always go for, say difference. I'm just using difference to really make it stand out. And what you can also do is you can go down the bottom. At any point, you can go to effects. So effects, and you say, you know what? I want that group to be 3D. Not 3D in terms of extrude, etc. but 3D. So just real extreme extrude, 3D. And you can see now that's turned into 3D. Now, if I expand this group out, and you can see for individual items, they are still not with effects. The effects is only applied to the group, only to that group, only to the objects within it. So if I decide, you know what? Oh, I don't want that object there anymore. I want it in another group. Well, the best way I think is just to expand everything out. So I can then turn around and say, well, I want that ellipse there into this group down the bottom. And you can just drag it down, put it, position it there. So now it's gone out of that group and it's lost its effect. So it is no longer 3D, it's only 3D because it was in that group. And again, you can move things around, you can select, change saturation, difference, etc. You can just modify all of these different things all independently, move them around, select them. Best way to select, I think personally, is just use the layers panel. You can select, but sometimes you find it you know, possibly tricky to do. So resize that design, etc. Now you can also, if you decide, you know what, oh, I've got made a mistake, I can always right click and I can delete it. So I can delete items from the group. Also, say if I've got all these groups, so I've got all these groups, I can now go over here and let's not that one, let's just go for, say, a, something that's slightly different, a star. So I can create a star design. Now, when I create like that, it adds it straight away to the one, the group there. Now, I don't want that. So deselect everything, make certain everything's deselected, then create the star, 
and you can see then it's added the top. Personally, I always prefer that. Prefer just to add it on top, because what you can then do, you can say, well, I want it in this group. And of course, I can rename the group to make it more obvious what it is, because at the moment it says group one, not very obvious. But I can say, oh, I want that in that one. So I can just drag it down and you can drag down and you see that blue line in between and release. And you've got it as part of that group now. It's been updated, becomes part of that group. And of course, because that group's been modified all the way up there with effects, it suddenly gets that 3D effect as well. And you can still move it around, all those sort of things, reposition it, etc. change the blending modes and much, much more. But also you can, of course, rotate it and scale it, etc. But you can still group those. So right click and just down here and group. So you can see you can create quite a complex group. You can also, if you want, apply, just go to layer. Now I've deselected everything. So layer and new adjustment and apply HSL. So HSL and you can see then I can recolor everything, all those groups recolored. However, let's just undo that. I don't want that. But I can expand that out, go to that one, and let's just go select that group, just one of the groups, or maybe that group. Doesn't matter. One of the groups selected. Now I can go to Layer, New Adjustment, and again, I'm going to use HSL as an example, but it could be one of the others. And you can see then I can change that, and you can see that group changes, not the rest. Everything in the other groups, untouched. And you can see now that's been added to that group. Now, if I had effects, etc., filters, if I've got Affinity Photo, I can go backwards and forwards between the two. I could also have live layers, etc., there as well. And of course, you could have symbols, other designs. You could all turn the whole lot. But you've got this group of group of group group. And this group structure can be modified, repositioned, renamed, tweaked in all kinds of different ways. So, well... Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.